Good morning, Bridge Church. Good and morning. We just, we just want to welcome you to our <laughs> worship and communion service. Yeah, and so I want to remind you that we are going to be taking communion this morning. So if you had your package delivered, if you're local, you can go ahead and grab the communion elements that were in that. Or if you would like to grab crackers or bread or a sugar cookie, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Juice, water, milk. It, what is important is what the elements represent, not what the actual elements are. Yes. So we just want to make sure that you have a chance to grab some things that will help you as we prepare for communion. And then we have a couple more announcements for you. Um, we want to invite you to continue uh, through the daily devotions with us in our Advent readings. You and your packages received one, and it's called Christmas Tide. If you didn't know, we changed over, so we're in our Christmas Tide, 12 days of Christmas, with that, along with our fasting and feasting guide, because in the 12 days of Christmas, it's all about feasting. There's no more fasting for this two <laughs> weeks, which is awesome. And so, because we haven't all done enough feasting over the last couple right, of days, right? right. <laughs> Um, but with that, those, uh, those daily readings are also posted online on our Facebook page. And so we want to invite you to join in the discussion on those. And we also want to let you guys know that we are planning to return to in-person uh, services at Black Box Theater uh, two weeks from now, January yeah. 10th. Um, for we, the 11 o'clock service. For the 11 o'clock service only. Um, very important, we'll be uh, sending out an RSVP yeah. email note. We just ask that you would uh, RSVP if you plan to return or if you plan to come to that service. Yeah, and if you're not in our email, you can drop your email into the notes, the comment section on um, Facebook or YouTube right now. But also on our website, bridgeih.church, there is a place to RSVP for service that we will have live um, after next week. Good one. And also, we want to let you guys know that our Bridge Builders groups will resume after the first of the year. Uh, the ladies will start back up on January 7th. Yep. And the men's group will be, uh, start back up on January 9th. And again, if you want any information for that, you can check those out on our website or email us, Pastor Jen at BridgeIH.Church or Pastor Rick. At bridgeih.church. That's right. <laughs> and then finally, we just want to thank you guys for continuing to be faithful with your tithes as we have not been meeting in person, but we've been meeting only online. Um, and as we uh, head towards the end of this year, we want to thank you for that. But we also want to invite you, if you would like to... Um, give an offering above that tithe if you would like to contribute to our new uh, project you guys if you didn't hear the big announcement our office we space. have yeah we have office spaces and children's ministry spaces for sunday morning right next door to black box and we are in the middle of construction and renovation in that property right now super excited yeah very much and so if you'd like to contribute to that you can make out a check you would write that check to our parent church healing place but in the memo line, you would put Bridge Church Reno. And then you can mail that check to us, um, Bridge Church, P.O. Box 1174, Indian Head, Maryland, 20640. Yeah. With that, we are really excited to continue to celebrate with you, to worship with you, yeah. and invite you into today's service. We're going to have our children's worship. We're going to jump right in. We want to see those dance moves from you guys. We gave Mary the week off for Christmas. And so you guys got to help us out by jumping in. Make up your own moves. Yep, you can make up your own moves. Just don't make them look like Rick's moves or no one will be impressed, okay? <laughs> no, it's about coming to God with our whole hearts. Yes. No matter whether our... We move in <laughs> rhythm or not. And so we want to invite you to join us for kids worship and then our worship service before we begin our communion yeah. service.
Bye.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Well, listen, I think we would all agree that 2020 has been an incredibly challenging and difficult year. Mm -hmm. And so at this time, I think more than any other, the staff and I felt it was important that we would come together as a church family to celebrate the sacrament of communion. Yes. So if you jumped in with us a little bit later, didn't see announcements in the beginning, uh -huh. go ahead and grab, um, if you had your packages, grab your communion elements, or if you didn't or you would prefer, you can grab crackers, juice, bread. It doesn't really matter. It's not what we're consuming, but what it represents. Right. So you can take a minute to get that now. Um, and with that, I just want to uh, help us understand a little bit the deep meaning behind this. Because as believers, most of us feel like this began with Jesus and the disciples at the Last Supper. But Jesus and the disciples at the Last Supper were celebrating the Passover feast. They were celebrating the feast that the Jews had commemorated for centuries, practiced for centuries, as they celebrated freedom from their captivity to Egypt. The theme of Passover is redemption. It, it represented or, or memorialized Egypt's um, enslavement of Israel coming to an end. It represented God freeing his people. Now there are some neat things about Passover. It was never celebrated at the synagogue. It was always celebrated around a family table right. as a family. And so together as our church family, in our homes and in your homes, we invite you to gather around the table to celebrate the Passover feast now fulfilled in Jesus. Welcome to the table. Yeah. And with that welcome to the table, <laughs> um, rabbinic law said that every man, even the poorest among them, was to recline at the Passover table. And so what that meant at a time of servants and those they served was that for Passover there were no servants, that everyone was equal, and your invitation to the table was not based on your status, but simply who you were as God's child. Mm. Now Jesus took that Passover feast and he took it to the next level because it was no longer about the nation of Israel freed from slavery to Egypt, but through Jesus' life and death and sacrifice, his sacrifice is the perfect unblemished lamb, then the Passover feast became, the Last Supper became our communion sacrament as we celebrate freedom for all people from sin and death. Now, um, in Scripture, Psalm 115, 16, 17, and 18 were the Jewish, excuse me, the Jewish songs or the Jewish hymns of Passover. And so as Pastor Rick reads Psalm 116, I want us to listen for those themes of redemption, the themes of freedom. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. Mm -hmm. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord when I said, I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm, I said, everyone is a liar. 
What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious is in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord indeed. Jesus delivers all believers from the snare of death through the sacrifice of his life. So as we move from Passover to communion, as Paul teaches us in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six, For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So as we begin celebrating communion, I invite us to prepare the bread. And just as Jesus blessed the bread, I would ask that you would read this prayer with us. We, we partake, partake of this bread, the broken body of our Lord, in remembrance of our bondage, his sacrifice, and our freedom. Amen. Amen. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. During Passover, there were five cups on the table, not just one. And those five cups, four of them represented the four expressions of redemption that God promised the Israelites in their slavery to Egypt in um, Exodus 6, verses 6 and 7. God promised his people, I will bring you out from the suffering of Egypt, and I will save you from enslavement, and I will deliver you. And I will take you for me as a nation, and I will be for you the Lord. Now there was a fifth cup on the table that was the cup of the prophet Elijah. And that cup represented the redemption that was yet to come. The cup was never drunk by anyone at the table because it was left for the prophet's return. Now most agree as the Last Supper drew to a close and scripture tells us that Jesus took the cup. It would have been the cup of Elijah that Jesus picked up mm. because in that he was showing that they were celebrating the very last Passover feast, that things were about to change. It's symbolism that Elijah's mission had been fulfilled in John the Baptist who had prepared the way and proclaimed the coming of Jesus and that he, Jesus, was the Messiah who would bring the final redemption. Also, the wine symbolized the power of Jesus's life in us. And the disciples drinking from the cup represented the fact that they were taking on Elijah's mantle of proclaiming the way of the Lord. And as the disciples took the cup then, and we take the cup now, it says that we agree to take on sharing the good news, the gospel of Jesus, the power of redemption and freedom in Jesus with others. Once again, we invite you to read this blessing with us. We take this cup, Lord, remembering that it is your blood, resolving to let your life live in us. Empower us that we may walk worthy of Elijah's mantle and your life. Amen. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it. For this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Would you drink the cup? In Mark's gospel, we find a scripture in verse 26 that said, When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You see, Passover concludes with the singing of the hymn, and the song they sang would have been Psalm 117, 
which we invite you. We're not going to sing. That's not a good plan. <laughs> but we invite you to read with us. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord, all you nations. Praise, Praise him, all you people of the earth. For his unfailing love for us is powerful. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Praise the Lord. Indeed, praise the yes. Lord. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this beautiful celebration, this sacrament of Holy Communion. God, that doesn't just tie us back to Jesus' words in the New Testament, but the word alive from the very beginning of time as it represents your freeing the people of Israel and now through Jesus freeing all of us from not just slavery to a nation, but slavery to sin and death. We're no longer in bondage through the blood and the body of Jesus. God, we thank you. Um, God, we thank you for freedom. Yes. We thank you that you empower us through the Holy Spirit to, to live in that freedom, to walk in that freedom, to walk in that hope. Yes, thank you. The, the peace, the hope, the love, and the joy that these candles of this, um, of this Advent wreath represent. You allow us and invite us to walk in those as we proclaim freedom in Jesus to others. Father, we pray your blessing as we come to the end of this year. We lean into a hope that goes beyond our current circumstance. And we pray, Lord, that we would walk into 2021 <laughs> um, with hope and with peace, yes. with joy and with love, with a great security knowing that our salvation, our life, is in Christ. Mm. Jesus, it's in your name that we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 We want to invite you to continue this celebration by worshiping with us. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise. 
that you're working even when I don't feel that you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see that you're working even when I don't feel that you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working breaks the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be set free oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you lay down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus.
chorus I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down. That I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Hey, everybody, just want to say thank you for joining us today. We love you. It was so great having you in service with us. Uh, we want to just invite you to continue with a heart of worship, continue in your devotions this week, and everyone, as we head into this new year, let's head into the year with the hope of Christ, yes. the light of Jesus shining brightly into what must be. <laughs> must be. be. <laughs> <laughs> a better 2021. Be safe. Be blessed. Yeah. We love you guys. We love you. Bye.